Hi. Hi. It's nice to meet you in person. You, you too. You too. You've been listening to me since high school? Yeah. How much time did you do in detention for that? <laughs> None. None? Oh, my God. My brother introduced me uh -huh. to your music. Really? Okay. And um, I don't actually listen to a lot of music. Uh -huh. I, I like playing instruments a lot. Really? But for some reason, I really like listening to your music. Great. Thank you. <laughs> and that Thank style you. of music that's more inspiring. Uh -huh. I, I find that's what I go to when I do listen to music. Beautiful. So. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question, I have it actually written down. I so. see, okay. Um, so what have you learned throughout the many years of your practice that you would like to share with someone who so far has only a few years of experience with their own practice? Any insights, realizations, and or lessons? You better let me look at that. It's a long question. <laughs> I might have to take it word by word here. Mm -hmm. um. You know, all practice, all the practice, spiritual practice is, is, is what it's for is to allow us to become good, full, complete human beings, you mm -hmm. know, to be and to free us from our kind of the jail we live in where everything's about me and how do I get this, how do I get this, how do I avoid that, how do I change this, you know, how, you know the me stuff, mm -hmm. all day long, everybody thinks me, 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 me. So practice over time kind of opens our eyes to the rest of the world. We see suffering, we see people who are hurting. And, and after a while, we begin to naturally have a, a natural feeling for wanting to help people. But how to help people? Not, it's not always so easy, you know? Mm -hmm. So the practices that we do help, us, help our hearts open also to ourselves, and it helps us feel better about being who we are as we are without having to make changes and adjustments to please other people. We start to feel more comfortable in our own skin. Mm -hmm. And then whatever we do is more natural and easier. So I think, you know, if, to answer your question about how it, it's changed me over the years, that's definitely how, you know, I mean, when I first started chanting, um, most, you could say in India, although it was a little bit before that, it was very much about trying to get some kind of experience, you know, trying to make something happen, trying to get some bliss or something like that. How many expectations? A lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. So over the years, over the years, it's more, it's changed. It's more about uh, just being more in the moment, mm -hmm. just doing it and dealing and dealing with whatever arises in that moment, not needing it to be happy, happy, or pushing away sad, sad, but just entering into the practice. And then for that period of practice, everything is simply is seen differently. You know, a thought is simply to let go of. It's not necessarily to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 say an unhappy emotion can be uh, noticed and released without having to act on it or having to create more, uh, more negativity inside of oneself. So the practice is simply to re remember to let go whenever you can remember to let go. And the fact, the fact that we've, we've started this mantra going or these names going, that actually reminds us that this is what we decided to do in the moment. We didn't decide to sit here and think about this stuff. So we keep coming back. The mantra reminds us of itself. And then at that moment, we recognize we've been gone, so we let it go and come back. Let it go and come back a million times a minute. If you're really looking, you're really paying attention, you'll see almost every second you're gone mm -hmm. and you come back. Most of the time we don't notice. It's so fast. But then we get caught in a big thought or a big emotion or a big memory or a big something, and we're gone for 20, 25 minutes, and then we go, oh, you know, what happened. Mm -hmm. So it should, the practice itself softens us and ripens our hearts. And it's going to make you a better you and a, a more complete you, a more compassionate you. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you inner strength to overcome your own limitations and your own obstacles in your life, just like it does for me or anybody else who does the practices. So how would you say is the best way about going and letting go of those expectations? Because they normally um, like they, 
they occur, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you have an experience yeah. and then so. you expect that the next time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, it's kind of difficult to detach from those expectations. De detachment means to, be, to release, not to push away. And mm -hmm. Notice and release. Mm. You know, oh God, I'm, there's my, I'm, I, I'm sitting here hoping it'll be like it was last week. You know, and then you notice that and you notice everything that comes from that. But you try to keep the mantra going. Mm -hmm. That's the key to it all. You don't fight with your thoughts. You don't fight with yourself. You know, if you spent the whole, whatever, half an hour wishing it could be some more, something else, that's not bad as long as you're aware of that. Mm -hmm. The more aware you are, the less energy stays with that, with the gone-ness, you know, the, the out to lunchness. the more aware of you are. And you see, and also it's very humbling because we see how little control we have over our own thoughts and con and, and our own lives, and the reactions we have to what we go through in a, in a day, you know? How somebody looks at us and we think that they don't like us, so we create a whole story about them, and then we find out that wasn't true, and then we realize we spent the last six months making voodoo dolls against that person when there was no reason to be doing it in the first place, you know? So practice helps us release all those, those things that we grab onto, positive, I mean, pleasant, and unpleasant because when we're chanting we're just trying to immerse ourselves as much as we can in the practice in the moment so anything that takes us away from really being in the in, th in the practice is just let go of and come back and then you know, later on you can be as stupid as you want it doesn't matter but while you're in practice you, you'll notice you're stupid and so you let go of that you notice you're not remembering. You notice you're not paying attention. And then, and then, when we begin to see how un incapable we are of cutting through the reactions that we have and all the fantasies we have about people that aren't really correct necessarily, then we begin to see, we see that other people who really aren't doing anything consciously to help themselves how it must be for them you know how much they must be suffering without even recognizing it. Mm -hmm. and that that opens your heart you mm -hmm. know, you know? Yeah. it's a long it's a path it's a it's a it's a path you walk on and as you walk things get clearer and more open and, and things come from the inside you don't need anything from the outside it's good to understand a little bit if you like reading this kind of stuff, reading it too, immerse yourself in it. But the real changes will come as you open up inside, you'll recognize things out there. And you go, oh, that's the way it is. But you weren't seeing it clearly first. Right. You know? So it just happens. Yeah, that's why I think I came up with this question, because I think after a couple, many years of practice, you start to see things differently than you do in the very beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, it was always that way. Yeah. But yeah. you just yeah. change your yeah. perspective of looking Absolutely. at it. Absolutely. That's what I was asking. Not only, not only do you learn to see things differently, the, 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 the seer part of yeah. you is changing. Yeah. It's less judgmental, it's less reactive, mm -hmm. it's more open, it's getting more and more uh, transparent, it's, it's lightening up. It's not so like this. So you go through your day differently. Mm -hmm. You don't even notice that necessarily. The real changes are off the radar. Other people might tell you, oh, you, you know, you've changed so much. And you go, what are you talking about? If, if it was up to me, if you ask me, how do you see, see yourself today as opposed to 50, 40 years ago? I say, I'm the same schmuck I was 40 years ago. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. But maybe I spend less time thinking that. <laughs> That's all. Um, so I have one more question. Yeah. Um, so with any kind of music, it usually like it stirs up some type of emotion. Mm -hmm. So what's a when do you cross the line from emotion to devotion in terms of yeah music? From any kind of music. Yeah, or, or not yeah. even just music, just in whatever you're feeling. Because I know when you listen to like metal music, that will mm -hmm. cause like this type of emotion. Mm -hmm. And then when you listen to a love song, then it mm -hmm. will cause more mm -hmm. different type of 
yeah. feeling. So when do you change that into devotion when you're listening to chanting, for instance, and things like that? Hmm. It's a good question, really. I think the 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 key to it all is that when when something happens, say music or a movie or some kind of something like that, uh, precipitates a lot of emotion in us. Is it a tight feeling? Is it an intense feeling? Is it, uh, is it something you kind of want to protect from other people and hold on to? Mm. You know, or is it like an openness and a wideness of heart, like an expansive feeling? Mm. You know, where that people can walk through it and be part of it. They're not, you don't need to protect it. It's, that would be more of an open kind of devotion. Uh, a lot of people think that worshiping their guru and, and being involved in some kind of scene and loving their guru, that that's devotion, you know. But mostly it's a very low level devotion. It's like my devotion for my guru when I was with him physically, most of it was very emotional. You know, I was attached to his physical presence. For me, that was it. I didn't want to be anywhere else. I, you know, and so I would do anything to stay as close to him as possible. You know, that, that is not real. Uh, that's not, that's a technique for a dying man, you know, who wants to stay wants to stay deep above the water, you know? Mm -hmm. You gotta keep swimming. Mm -hmm. But then when the water's everywhere and the air, you know, then there's nothing to worry about and then you feel a different type of love, which is much more inclusive. And nobody can get in the way of that. Nobody can shut that down. And it's not focused only on one person. So Maharaji became a window instead of a doorway. Mm. Instead of a door, he became a window. So. I can see through him to the whole universe, but with, there was a, first it just looked like a door, and I needed to be near that door, which you, I couldn't see through, all I could see was the door. And then it changed into a window, so now I can see through him to everything. So it's the same lurching feeling, but it, it's more all-inclusive. And, and there's no fear involved in it. It's not mine, I gotta hold on to it, mm -hmm. I'll lose it. See, that's the emotions come and go. And we do everything we can to either keep them away if they're negative or hold on to them if, we, if they're pleasant. But either way, we're gonna fail. But this kind of love is always here as soon as we remember to look for it. It's always here. It doesn't come from the outside, it's, it's sitting inside of us. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, now go back to class. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, you want me to write a note to your teacher? <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you too, thank, thank you. you. Okay.